I'm John Falardo, Vice President for Government Relations of the American Chiropractic Association. Sitting here today with our good friend and colleague, Rick Miller. As you can see, we're at the Glass and Closed Nerve Center, the American Chiropractic Association headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. Rick, let's talk a little bit about sure. what's going on in Washington this week. And uh, with Congress back in town now, I think most of our members know by now, uh, yesterday uh, the, the House passed uh, and sent on to the president. In fact, it was Monday, right. uh, two days ago, uh, Monday of this week, that they passed and sent on to the president uh, a bill that delaying the cuts in, in Medicare uh, uh, provider payments until the end of this That's month, right. December 31st, uh, hopefully uh, giving Congress a chance to address this issue uh, over the next several weeks and maybe get a longer term uh, fix uh, to that uh, very uh, uh, precarious situation. Let's talk a little bit about well, that. Well, yeah, I, I would say, John, one of the reasons uh, it's taking place and we're here is we are in a lame duck session. Mm -hmm. And as our viewers might know, lame duck sessions used to be uh, a very unusual uh, circumstance. Maybe I a think. day or two. In, in, yeah. in recent years, in recent times, these are becoming almost a standard thing, a lame duck and it was about a year ago, uh, actually quite uh, longer than a year ago, uh, when you sat here and the debate over national health care reform was going on and you predicted we would be here till Christmas Eve was last, working on the legislation. Yep. You hit it right on the nose. We're in this lame duck and with this extension of the fee schedule, which only runs to the end of the month, I think we're going to be here Christmas Eve again. Well, what, what's your thoughts? Uh, you, you know, you, you could be right. Uh, I, I was uh, talking to a senior uh, Democratic member of the Senate uh, in, in the Senate uh, several weeks ago uh, regarding this, and he did predict uh, that the Congress will be in until uh, Christmas Eve. Now, the Senate is scheduled uh, is, is scheduled already to be That's here until right. December seventeenth, uh, a week before Christmas Eve. I wouldn't be surprised again uh, to see uh, the Congress here uh, on Christmas Eve. I, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but like you said, I mean these these have become standard practices now uh, that these after uh, election uh, or late in the year sessions actually become a uh, uh, common occurrence. Right, and and it's uh, and it's just I think it's a sign of the times that. They, 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 they these self-imposed deadlines of getting things done don't work and they just... And they don't hold up. They don't often. hold up and they just stretch themselves all the way to the holidays. And, and I think, too, the viewers ought to be reminded, we're not dealing with the new Congress here, the not Congress yet, that no. was elected back no. in November. This is still the old Congress. Right. So there are a lot of defeated members up there trying to figure out what to do. I don't know why they want to stay around in town, but... Again, they've got to sort through these issues. And this SGR thing is one of the most vexing things. Yeah. And look, the central problem there is, is, the, is the problem the whole country faces. Not enough money. How do we pay for any changes, any fix to the formula mm -hmm. that would legitimately reimburse providers mm -hmm. uh, the way they deserve to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, reimbursed? So uh, I think at the end of the day, I think maybe they'll fix the problem. But I think they're only going to, my own opinion is they'll only kick the can down the road again. It'll be some temporary patch. And I think providers everywhere are going to be under the gun. Not just doctors of chiropractic, mm -hmm. but the hospitals, uh, everybody in this reimbursement chain dealing with Medicare, uh, I think are going to get their uh, wings clipped a little bit here. Yeah. And in, in uh, Monday of this week, uh, when we informed our members that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cut was delayed, uh, there was also an action item in, in that message That's to our right. members to contact their members of Congress and urge them uh, to come to a, an agreement on this, on, on not just a one month or a three month or a four something month Something more patch, substantial. Something more substantial and get this down there and get this uh, completed and taken care of. We urge you to, uh, again, contact your member of Congress using that alert bulletin. And if you don't have that alert bulletin, this is found on our Legislative Action Center. You can get to there. Uh, from our website, let's talk just a uh, just a couple more minutes on uh, on this on the lame duck schedule. Uh, they've they've got to do the continuing resolution. Right. Uh, that's one thing. And can, for folks out there, uh, the continuing resolution is 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 uh, a bill to keep the government running 
at uh, a current rate. And uh, that's one thing they're going to have to address because on Friday uh, of this week, uh, that is when uh, that will, uh, on the 3rd, that's when the, uh, the current continuing resolution sure. runs out, so they have to address that. One well, other thing. I, I wonder, too, and this, this, this is uh, in the way of a potential threat, whether in context of that continuing resolution or possibly some omnibus bill that comes at the very end mm -hmm. where Congress is sort of chucked into it, all sorts of things. We sometimes refer to it as the last train out of the station. I don't know if we're going to have that type of bill at the end of the year, but I wonder, and of course, when you have a bill like an omnibus that comes late in a session where people really uh, have reached sort of the end of their rope, you wonder what provisions might get uh, stuck in a bill like that at the very end, sort of uh, in the dead of night. Uh, that's always something we have to watch out for to mm -hmm. make sure there's nothing harmful to our interests that sneaks their way into some big omnibus yeah. bill. So we're on the case on that. Exactly. Let's talk a little bit about what, what's what been the big talk in Washington, though, this, this week. And this has been, the, uh, and that's the National Commission on uh, Fiscal Responsibility and Reform. Uh, that has been the, the headline issue in Washington here uh, this uh, the last couple of days. And this is the panel that was put together by President Obama uh, months ago right. uh, to come up with recommendations uh, on, on certain, what it's looking to be is certain cuts in certain areas. One of the things that they, they talked about in here is uh, uh, visiting uh, the, the physician payment uh, scheme, uh, if you will, in, in Medicare, and coming up with a, uh, a substantive fix to that. Um, and one of the things, that they haven't voted on this yet, and one of they're going to vote That's Friday right. of this week on that, uh, but Congress has promised the President uh, that they will, uh, that they will uh, take up any of these uh, issues that the Commission face, uh, passes. And uh, again, we're going to have to be on the watch out for that as well. Sure. I think, John, as you said, that, that recommend, uh, recommending body hasn't taken a formal vote yet mm -hmm. on, on a big plan. But the co-chairs of the body have. They've surfaced up and put a substantial plan on the table. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's the plan that everyone loves to hate. Mm -hmm. Because, quite frankly, it does face up, whether you like the plan or not, it does attempt to address some of the very difficult fiscal realities that the nation faces. Mm -hmm. And it talks about making cuts in any number of areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think there are, have been, at least those leaders of the commission, have been pretty brave to put those issues on the table. We'll see what comes out of this thing. It could be a game changer yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, certainly the environment for funding special programs is getting tighter all the time here. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, uh, again, uh, it's all about the money. It's all, it's all about the money. Uh, let's, let's finish up here. We're talking a little bit about it. Here we are December 1st. That means we're uh, just a little more than two months out now from uh, uh, the National Chiropractic Legislative Conference here in Washington. Uh, as you know, that's February 12th through the 15th here in, 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 in D.C. And as we've talked about before to our viewers, uh, this is a perfect opportunity for our folks to come into town, Absolutely. meet the new Congress, uh, which uh, about a quarter of them will be new. Uh, there's over, there's going to be over 90 new members in the House. Uh, as you know, there's 435. So you're, you're talking about almost a 25 percent of the of the Congress will be new. Excellent opportunity for our folks to come here to Washington and oh, lobby. Oh, I think so. And you know, we just didn't fall off the turnip truck. We've got NCLC this year scheduled early. There's some there's some thought that uh, went into that process because we do have these new members of Congress in town. We want to get in there early when you can make an impression on these new members. Mm -hmm. uh, when they when it's going to be fresh in their minds, these groups that right. start walking in the door. So we need all the doctors out there and the students to be there for this event. It will help amplify and add a great deal of weight and prestige and energy to the issues that we're going to be working on in this next Congress. And go to acatoday.org slash nclc. All the, uh, all the information is up there for you. And that, that information will be uh, growing as time gets closer. Rick, my friend, thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, John. God bless.